this nice book is that interface, I would say, between uh, physics and philosophy. And uh, it's very difficult to find uh, questions because uh, uh, you you are concerned with almost every problem in physics and in cosmology. <laughs> so uh, we could define uh, really a lot of questions. But uh, I think uh, the more interesting and the more specific would concern, uh, of course, uh, other worlds, other universe, and uh, what means... Uh, to exist for a universe and to be more specific, for instance, when uh, you consider other universe of uh, given of the types uh, you defined, uh, how would you say that it exists? Uh, is that uh, in the same way that uh, when you read a novel, for instance, when you read a novel, in the novel there is uh, some kind of universe which was invented by the author and this maybe exist or not and is that the same sense to the word exist that you will give to the universe you mentioned? No, I, I use the word exist in a stronger sense to things hmm. that we don't invent but things that we can discover that are, that are out there in some sense independently of us. So before we start talking about other universes I think it's good to remind ourselves what we mean by our universe, sure. and I, I, so I brought it with me. Ah, okay. <laughs> of course, in astronomy, <laughs> when we say our universe, we don't mean all of space. We, mm. we mean simply the spherical region of space from which light has had time to reach us so far during the 13.8 billion years since mm. our Big Bang. And we see here beautiful photos of the edge of our universe taken with the Planck satellite sure, released sure. last year which are actually baby pictures of what things looked like 13.8 uh, billion years in ago. In fact, we should be inside. That yes, <laughs> inside, exactly. Yes, we yes. really should be inside yes, the, looking at the out center, yeah. at this. We should try to make one of these of glass, maybe, so we can see. Yeah. And then the question, of course, we're just wondering about is whether this space, which we can in principle map out with future telescopes, is all that exists, or whether mm. there is more that's actually out there. And, mm -mm. But if there is more, uh, if I understand, this is what you call the level one or level two multiverse, right? That's right. The level one and level two multiverse, you should get, use a less fancy word for it and just call them both all it's the space. Because there would still only be mm -hmm. one single space. It's a very, very big space and a much more diverse and interesting space than the part we see here. The, mm -hmm. the level one multiverse, if there are people out there learning about things in school, they would still learn exactly the same things in physics class. Mm -hmm. But they would learn different things in history class because in this part of space, their atoms started out in different places and the th history played out differently. Yes. Whereas in the level two multiverse, if it exists, in these regions of space, even some things which we learned here in school are constants of physics, uh, might actually have different values. So they could learn it, even different things in physics class. So it's more diverse. Yes, yes. So you make a distinction between uh, some kind of uh, universal laws or meta laws, which would apply everywhere, including very remote parts that you call universe of uh, level two, and uh, conjunctural values of the constant, for instance, which may change from one universe and the other. But uh, yeah. are you sure that this distinction is really uh, objective, I would say, that it really has a meaning? I'm not sure. Uh -huh. That's a very good question. I think um, it's been quite interesting, right, throughout the history of science, how we've come to question mm -hmm. things we took for granted before. If So where I work at MIT, a lot of students like to wear these T-shirts with equations of physics on them. Oh, yeah. And the... Uh, <laughs> If you imagine one day that somebody will come up with equations that describe physics perfectly, mm. we can ask what would be on that t-shirt? Should there be, for example, a number eight there? Because there are eight planets in our solar system. And, uh, now, that sounds like a ridiculous idea because we know that there are actually other solar systems with five planets yes. and three planets. And so the number eight is clearly not telling us anything about reality. It's telling us something about our address in reality, you know, that, that we are in the solar system with eight planets. Yes, and then um, what about this? You know, should this information from the Planck satellite be on the T-shirt? Well, probably not either because 
if you built the satellite over here, you would see a different pattern. And if you so, if you want to explain to some intergalactic mailman, you know, where to send yes, a letter, you would true. say send it to the place where the Planck data looks like this, to that solar system with eight planets. But precisely, if you have a Type Two universe, you cannot send a satellite, and you cannot have any kind of communication. Right. So this is purely abstract, and in that case. Uh, for me, first, it is not uh, uh, you. You cannot speak of that in 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 physics. So this is not in the field of uh, the, that uh, uh, we call physics. And uh, secondly, I don't know uh, what means the word existing in that case. And I don't yeah. make a real difference between uh, the universe which exists uh, in my favorite novel. Yeah, this is a very interesting point you bring up, and there's mm. clearly a controversy if you take a thousand physicists and ask them to define what is physics, they will not all agree with each other. Right? Some people feel that physics should only talk about that which we can observe directly. Mm. Uh, others, this is a usual view. Up, well, up not, not, the, not among mm. most, I mean, I would say my colleagues are probably split about 50-50 at MIT, because some people will also say instead that what we're really testing here are theories and the and parallel universes are not theories they're predictions of some theories like the theory of general relativity for example beautiful mathematical theory of gravity it predicts a lot of things we can see like how light is bent by gravity sure. then it also predicts what happens inside black holes which we cannot see and then we can ask well is that physics or not uh, if somebody doesn't like black holes they are not allowed to just say, well, I'm going to opt out of, of that prediction of general theory. relativity, unless they can come up with a better theory of gravity. So the way, I, the way I personally view this is that a theory is scientific if we can test at least one of its predictions, not if we can, if we don't have to be able to test all its predictions. So general relativity, to me, is a very testable theory, sure. even though it predicts what happens inside black holes. And mm -hmm. so the analogy would be that we have some other theories which might be wrong or they might be right. Inflation, for example, which I knew, know that you are critical of and some people support. Um, I think what we will all agree is that it's a scientific theory that may, one, can, one can try to test with experiments. I'm not sure everybody agrees, but uh, <laughs> that's the point. That is the point. But the yes, point yes. is that it's interesting to do experiments, though, uh, uh, yes, in, the, in that yes. domain. And, yeah. and, and, and I think most people would agree that uh, this is physics to talk about whether inflation is, is right or not. Mm -hmm. But inflation itself, you know, just like general relativity, predicts a lot of things which... Well, we can see, we can argue about that, and it predicts also things certainly that we cannot see, if it predicted space, that there's more space here. Okay. And so to me, the interesting thing is, is uh, to, to test, see whether we can test this, the theories, cool. like relativity theory, like inflation. And, if, and I feel that if, if I start to take seriously a theory because of its other predictions, then I'm logically forced to take seriously also all its other predictions. It, it's not like if in America where you can buy coffee and opt out of the caffeine by buying decaf. You know, yeah. if I buy, accept the theory of general relativity, I'm forced to also accept what happens inside black holes. And if I accept inflation, I'm forced to accept its predictions. Well, 